Let, let's just using names. I don't want to say you're Trump, you're not, but let's just use names. It's easier. Trump's a diehard. I'm sorry. Fern's a diehard Trump supporter, which I don't know. I don't even know, to be honest, if that's true. I'm going to get some serious hate mail. At no, this but point, I'm just no. throwing it out there to make this conversation make sense. Right. So and so, it doesn't matter. Colin Fern is a diehard Trump supporter. You're a diehard Biden at the time, this other person. And right. said, How, what do you feel about this guy? Well, I feel this and I feel this and I feel strongly about this and I feel that way. And, and all the, this is why I support him and I hope he gets elected. And then I said, cool. That's exactly how Fern feels about Trump. And it was like, they couldn't grasp that. Like, Or, and I, some of these I know what you're talking about, or there were assumptions made about how, what, how I actually view things. Yeah, well, that's right. Like it's social media, Twitter, all these things. It's it's quite possibly the worst medium for communicating any thought ever. Well, this is much better. Like, you know, very few people, I'll be very candid with you, very few people that I that that sit however far across the spectrum from where I am. If we sit down and have an at length conversation, do they feel the same afterwards? Because they've made in a lot of assumptions about how I feel about certain things. And I know people don't believe me, but like, I'm kind of in the middle. Like if no, you lined I, up all of the topics, like I'm kind, I'm pretty much dead center. And that's, and that's where I can also speak from. I'm like, look, no different than what we post on the best hour or I post on my personal. It's like, there's always hyperbolic statements because that's what social media is. I, I don't draw you in by saying, Hey, I like these policies from Trump and I like these policies from Biden. And by the way, I also like these from the Green Party or whatever parties are out there. But my point right. was when I started to look at things as wait, that person feels as strongly about their belief as I do about mine. And then I was like, that's interesting. And I think most people don't ever stop and look at it from that perspective. Well, and so this is how this is kind of how you loop this in, which is that where the assumptions happen or what I like to call the big leaps which is I see how you feel about this one thing and then make assumptions about how many other things past that that are either slightly related or not related at all, you know? So you could do that about anything, right? Just be like, hey, I, the, the, and, and understanding like, hey, how somebody feels about one thing is not how they feel about everything. And, and the lack of nuance with regard to that or the over assumption that look, well, listen, if you're for, I mean, you could pick any, you know, um, pretty hyperbolic or, or, or polarized topic and, and just be, well, if that's how they feel about that, well, then I know exactly where they sit uh, politically. And it's like, mm, maybe not, probably not actually, you know, most people, what I find is are, are not anything that would resemble social media. Most people are pretty milk toast. You know, the average yeah. person is like, yeah, I kind of agree with you on that. And I kind of disagree with you on that. And I'm like, yeah, I feel the same way. Cool. Let's go about our day. And, and I just think it comes down to, you know, communication for a lot of this, right? It goes back to the, you know, if we're going to tie this back into coaching, we're assuming this person's being a jerk for no reason, not looking at it like, Hey, a, they don't want to be a jerk and right. B, they don't know any better or, or ultimately see, they feel strongly about this. Like, I really believe I could do this at 135, right? You right, know, as right. a coach, there's not a chance in hell you're going to be able to do that. But, but we've all seen it where it's like those members, they think that. And then, and that's where at times you just have to let them crash and burn. Maybe not crash and burn, crash and but, burn like, but like late, like, let, them, let them learn. And, and and be there to be the safety net, which is like if the point they've decided, like, oh, all right, I really kind of fucked this up. <laughs> yeah. Be there to help them up and keep them moving instead of be like, I told you so. Like that would be that would be incorrect, which is like it's one of those things where like, I know this is gonna happen. I'm not gonna be like I told you so. In round three, they're gonna start stripping the bar down. At which point I will just walk over there, help them strip strip the bar down and put the weights away and then encourage them to keep moving. And then we'll talk about it afterwards. And I, and we won't, and I won't say, I told you so. What I'll probably say is because I'm not going to assume that they knew that was going to happen. I'm going to be like, Hey, that was a great decision. That was right. You, sh you should have stripped the bar. That was a fantastic decision. I'm glad you did that. 